Alright, so welcome back to Brighter Rays. We're looking at Matthew, or not Matthew, Malachi. Oh, Malachi 3, 16 through 18. And uh, we're kind of finishing up this chapter uh, today, looking at these last few verses here. So we looked at the ignorance, or at least the pleading of ignorance, and the um, harsh things that the people were saying against God, saying he doesn't do anything. Um, you know the 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 wicked are just prospering all over the place. They they get all the good stuff, while those who follow God don't get anything. And there's really no difference between good and evil. But that obviously is an exaggeration. We looked at Psalm 73 a little bit and saw how Asaph is really a hyperbole because it you know how, how he builds them up so high like they have no problems at all. The wicked have no issues at all, which we know is not true. They do have issues. Um, but it's this idea of like, look at them. They got good stuff, and look at me. I don't have good stuff. It's kind of a, a pride, jealousy kind of thing. That's where a lot of this comes from. But and that's where it came from the, back in the day. Like, we're the chosen nation of God, but yet look at us. We got, you know, exiled, and our cities are destroyed, and everything is horrible. Like, what's the difference? So, of course... They got that because they were disobedient, but they don't see that, right? They they don't want to they don't want to go there. They just want to ignore that. So that brings us to sixteen through eighteen. We have a shift in verse sixteen where Malachi inserts kind of a narrative section here about what happened in his day. Is that though many were evil, which probably the majority were, there were some that still feared the Lord, and they got together and spoke to each other. A book of remembrance, which was a record of the names of those who feared God and esteemed his name was created. These people, despite all the evil around them, stood and chose to follow God. God always has his remnant. Though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and without delay. It's Romans 9, 27 through 28. This should remind us of the vision of Daniel in Daniel 7, 9 through 10, who said, As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. See, the book is written, and the Lord speaks his blessing over those who are written in this book of remembrance. They are mine, he says. They are my treasured possession. They shall receive mercy. They will be distinct from the wicked. It will be obvious those who serve me and those who do not. Now, this day has already begun. The righteous are distinct from the wicked. But a day has been appointed when the gulf between the two will be complete. It will be like Isaiah 65, where it says, Behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be put to shame. Behold, my servants shall sing for gladness of heart, but you shall cry out for pain of heart, and shall wail for breaking of spirit. Well, let's move right into the conclusion of our study for this week. And I want to talk about our our land is filled with evil. It is time for us to write our own book of remembrance, right? Now there's a book in heaven, but the idea that we can take a stand now is necessary. The question is, do you fear the Lord and esteem his name? Then step forward. Be known. Don't hide it. You know, take a bold stand. Though many around might speak hard words against God. Now is not the time to cower in fear. You have been called for such a time as this. The wicked will see that there is a difference between them and you, and they should. Their anger toward God might turn to you. But we are called not to fear the fiery trial, but to expect it, to be ready for it. When the wickedness outside grows, we ought to gather together. When the fire dies down, we gather the coals together and then watch as it's fanned into flame. We too should draw near to each other and speak of God's goodness and pray that the Spirit 
when Fanus into a flame for him. And once that happens, the world will never be the same. Once that happens amongst the brothers and sisters in Christ, things change for them and for those around them. That's what we're called to do. So, figuratively, maybe even physically, write down a book of remembrance. Say, this is, this is what we're doing. You know, I am signing my name to this. It's almost, it almost reminds us of kind of what we do at baptism. When we get baptized, we're saying, I am, I am standing for this. I am writing my name in this book of remembrance. Write my name down. I fear the Lord. I, I reverence Him. And I will not cower in fear. But we need to do that every day, right? Because it's tempting not to follow God. It's tempting to cower in fear and, and to hide. But we need to sign that book of remembrance. We need our names to be in there. And uh, thankfully there's a book in heaven where our names are written. Even if we fail here on earth, that will never change. So we can praise God for that. Well, that's the end of our study for this week. And uh, next week we'll move into the uh, end of Malachi here. Coming to the end pretty quickly. And uh, look at what he has to say at the end here. And then uh, we'll move on. We have the plan of going on into Colossians next. So make sure you come back for that. But next time we'll finish off uh, Malachi. Thank you.